Good afternoon and welcome to The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom with Mark. So I just got to turn this down a bit. Someone deaf has been here before me and just about blown my ears out. This is The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom. And, and yes, it is Friday afternoon on the time of this recording, running into the back end of July now. And I just want to say a big uh, hello to everybody out there, all you good folks up on the Hawke's Bay and the folks out in the Kapiti and... Um, of course, this wonderful wire wrapper that we're lucky to live in. Um, it's good to have you all on board, and I hope you're doing all right. I know it's been viciously cold, mastered, and um, had its um, coldest night in uh, over 25 years the other day, something like 27 years. So, uh, yeah, it's been particularly vicious. I'm surprised we've had no snow, but it just happened to have been dry when we've had that cold, so it's um, really been a, a bit of a tough time of it for a lot of us. You know, it's it's very good that um, those of us who unfortunately are on benefits at least had a little bit of uh, extra money for heating this year, which was very welcome indeed, and uh, very nice to uh, be able to afford to be warm you know it makes a big big difference sometimes you have to make other sacrifices and I think it's uh, good to remember and to be mindful of what we do have and the fact that a lot of people don't have enough and to that end just excuse me a sec I'm going to get a little bit of newspaper here Okay, now I was looking at the uh, wire wrapper Times Age a little bit earlier and uh, you might remember uh, a few shows back I was talking about helping out the local folks here in Masterton where I do the show and uh, assisting the food bank in uh, helping out those few families and when I say few, there's about 125 families who rely very heavily on the food bank to keep them going and those folks for whatever reason, are, are in an unfortunate situation. They're not chances. They're people who are in genuine need. Them and if their whanau, their, their children, of course. And it's great to see that Masterton has rallied together and um, Countdown did uh, the food raising and the very generous general public round here um, gave an excess of $750 worth of food and countdown matched it dollar for dollar. So they really stepped up and, um, you know, that was in association with the food bank. So I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who contributed to that, to countdown, getting in behind it. It's good to see when the community does rally around and help folks. It makes a huge, huge difference. And, you know, it wasn't just tins of spaghetti. There's, there's other things that they need, like um, nappies. You know, they're really, really expensive, and it's such a relief for mums when they can um, get things like that and they don't have to make other sacrifices on their food budget to look after, you know, and get the essential things for their babies. So it's really, really heartwarming to see that the community got in behind that and i just like to say a big thumbs up to the rural sector, to you, all you farmers who came into town on your tractors and your utes last Friday. Big thumbs up to all of you. Um, our, our hearts and our prayers are with you and we realise that, um, you know, you're doing it very tough at the moment and believe you me, there's an enormous amount of community support out there for you farmers. I'm n not a farmer, I'm son of a farmer, but I, I'm not a farmer myself. I've always been a townie, but my heart has always been in the countryside and, um, you know, I understand that, you know, having a, a tax on your diesel vehicles is just unjust and unnecessary, uncalled for, unworkable and every other damn un you can think of because, um, you know, until an alternative is provided, farmers simply have no choice but to use the vehicles that they do and they are essential pieces of equipment to provide food, not just um, to earn those very important export dollars and not just to pay the taxes which help make our roads and schools and hospitals happen but it's also to provide that beautiful food which all of us enjoy so much. You know, we're so lucky and it breaks my heart to see divides being driven in between the urban and rural. We're in this together. I always
always keep saying this and I keep coming back to this point where we are all in this walker together and we must all paddle consistently in the same direction. If we fight each other, our whole society crumbles away and it's very important that we approach things with a bit more compassion and understanding and help each other. That's what it's all about. That's what my show's all about. It's a show about mental health and in both those cases people who are under financial stress to find food for their family and and farmers who are under um, not just financial but emotional stress I I always emphasise that farmers work seven days a week there's no such thing as a holiday for a farmer there's only ever work and um, it's tough it's tough you take chances you know you've you've got to keep yourself well physically and mentally and that's hard when you're on your own or you know your family is a long way away from anywhere and you don't have that community support always and it's amazing how small towns communities rally together so much stronger so much better and um, help and support each other but it's also good to see that in bigger cities like Marston, which is really a city now, that the community can also rally together. It's just small enough that we can still show a bit of care and consideration towards each other. And it's heartwarming to see these kind of things happening. It's not enough. It's never enough. But it's something. And, and I'm very glad for that. I'm glad for those people that there is some assistance and people are listening because I, I do complain a lot of the time, I realise, and I have a pop at a lot of people for a lot of things, because there's a lot of things that annoy me, and injustices in society that I see every single day, and am often subjected to myself. And harking back to the mental health issue, you know, the, the strains and the stresses that one feels mentally, the, the pressure, the angst and anxiety that you feel when you're absolutely scraping week to week, in the case of... of the poverty stricken in our cities and also the um the stress that farmers feel when when they feel like people aren't supporting them and they start asking themselves what am i doing this for do i really deserve all this stick all this negativity that i am getting here you know about uh, you know, pollution of rivers and cows farting and all this prejudice and nonsense built up against them by ignorant people. And that's not to say the system is perfect and it's not to say that we can't do more, but certainly farmers, certainly around my area, around Pahiatua, have really stepped up and got the community, the kids in there, planting out riparian strips with their mums and dads, and effort is being made. Not every farmer is a good farmer, but the majority of them are doing their bit and are stepping up in so many ways. It's not easy to break out of the way things have always been done. Our society encourages that. You know, this is the way we've always done it. This is an excuse that's always been used for repeated mistakes. I don't accept that at all, you know, it's time to engage the top two inches that God gave you and and realise that there are other ways of doing things, that it is not always necessarily a matter of just throwing money at a problem, it is utilising the resources that you have to the best of your ability, in other words, it's not what you got, it's how you use it, and that's the important thing. I think that COVID in some ways has made us reflect upon our society. It's generated enormous stresses and strains, not just for the poor and not just for the farmers, but, you know, for for many other people, the young folks, it's caused tremendous stress and anxiety and it's devastated communities like Fiji. You know, it's terrible to see what's going on and... My thoughts and and my heart go out to you folks out on the islands, not just Suva, but everywhere, you know, I hope things get better and I hope our government and other governments step up to help the more vulnerable folks of the islands Uh, and and we do our bit, we do the right thing by our brothers and sisters in Polynesia and Melanesia. I I really hope we step up and do our bit and, and, and help these folks who don't always have um, all the expertise and infrastructure that they require. So if we can get in behind them, it'll be good to see. 
I'd also like to see all, all of the doctors and nurses who are, um, you know, immigrants who are waiting to hear from the government rather than just put a stop on things. For the love of God, we have got to get as many doctors and nurses working as we can. Tell every single foreigner you are welcome to stay as long as you want, you know. Make your home here, live here. We're glad to have you, lucky to have you, welcome. That's what our government needs to be saying to these good people, and, and not just doctors and nurses, but all skilled people from overseas who are looking for a chance either to live here for a while or, or to make a new home with their families and live in a peaceful society where we can all work together. Now, there have been a lot of incidences in um, <clears throat> in the news recently, as there often are. Um, unfortunately, our so-called news is little more than titillation for the masses, and you know, there's been some, some terrible things on the news recently about people who have done monstrous things, and I would just like to uh, remind everyone that we make these monsters, that no child is ever really born evil, we make these creatures, we do these things to others and they do nasty things to us. So, you know, we have the best and most comprehensive social study that's ever been done in the Dunedin study. We know how to identify troubled children very, very early on in life. We know the steps we need to take, and yet we fail. We fail ourselves, we fail them, and, and society fails as a result. So, you know, it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort, but we need to look at the adversarial education system we have where we have successes and failures. Now that's not to say that you water everything down and give everyone a trophy for participation. There should always be a drive towards excellence, but generating a guaranteed number of failures regardless is just ridiculous. And what we need to do is to cater more for each child and that means more teachers. That is uh, an investment that, you know, will we'll return a thousand times every dollar that's put in if we can make people's lives better and, you know, help them avoid the roads of, of drugs and crime and poverty. And that is very, very avoidable in many, many cases. But unfortunately... Um, when you turn a cold shoulder, then the worst will happen. But if you get stuck in and do a bit of um, preventative work in the beginning, you'll save yourself a lot of agony and time. And by yourself, I mean society, you know. So the better we look after each other in the beginning and the better we engage all the way through, the better our society is. To turn your back and say, it's not my problem, there's nothing I can do, is just living in denial, and that will only ever make things worse. Well, I've got 15 minutes left, so there's so many different things to talk about. It was my intention to, to read a story today, but <laughs> what happens is once I get on a roll, it's, all, it's awful hard to stop when there's so many issues to talk about. Now, when it comes to mental health... Um, I find that anxiety um, tends to feed upon itself if you cannot focus on something other than the situation you're in. And I think it is important for us all not to be distracted by modern technology. Now, all I'm saying in that regard is that we need to realise that living on your cell phone um, detracts from your engagement in society. For example, if I'm sitting in my mate's garage where we have a few drinkies and the young ones are there, that they're, they're just on their phones and nothing else around them exists. There's no social interaction, there's no engagement. In fact, you're given the absolute cold shoulder like you don't exist. And I find it really quite offensive when you try and talk to someone and they're not even listening, they can't even engage. And you have to kind of tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, hey, wake up, wake up. I am here, you know. Um, that's unfortunate that we've got so intoxicated and so carried away by modern technology, you know, when things become fashionable, everyone tends to jump on board with these things. And 
I like to see my cell phone as a tool rather than a toy, not a form of entertainment. I use it for research and things like that, and it's it's exceptionally good for used in the right way, but used as a toy, all it does is is whittle your life away. It just trickles down the drain without you realising how much time you're wasting, staring at a screen, watching something happen somewhere else, and it has very little to do with real life. It's just a distraction. And I would like to encourage more people to get involved in real life, to go out, to go for walks, Recently, in the long weekend, I went down to um, Ocean Beach and Lake Ferry, and in some ways, it's you know it's sad for me to lose the beach to the masses, but in other ways, it was really, really, really good to see mums and dads taking their kids out for a walk on the beach and a rough beach at that, a beautiful, rugged part of the south coast of the North Island. They they are exceptional places to go. The beauty, and indeed I would say majesty, of those places is rare and exceptional, and it is something that we need to show our kids instead of them just playing the latest dance craze on TikTok. Maybe we want to get them out and feel the ocean breeze in your face and see people catching fish and engage in our society. But more than that, and more importantly, what I've been cracking on all over this um, COVID incident is that we get out and support local business and folks who, who really, really need that dollar. You know, there's a lot of foreign dollars not here now, so... All of these small mom and pop businesses, these small businesses, bakeries and takeaways and every little business you can think of, they're the ones that really, really need the support to get through, not just financially, but emotionally, you know, mentally, to know that the community will rally around, will support, does believe in itself. And this is what it's about, how much... Do we believe in our community, our society, in each other? The measure of our success is always the degree of support that we give each other. And if we are adversarial, if we are fighting against each other, then we are doomed to failure. So it is great to see so many people getting out and seeing different places. I mean, you know, if you go to Napier and go for a waltz down Marine Parade or, or even go for a big long stroll down Ocean Beach, get down towards some um, Hastings and that. There's, there's wonderful beaches out there. And even all the way around, I mean, if you are ever lucky enough to get up past Gizzy and, and even to, um, oh, Crikey, the magic, magic spots like Lotton Point and um, Mahia Peninsula and even round Hicks Bay, that stretch of coastline there is absolutely gorgeous between about oh, Christmas and the end of Feb when the Pūtakawai are, are in full flower down on the beach. It is just mind-blowingly beautiful and those little quail running around the, the the gravel roads everywhere she's a spectacular part of the country and I would encourage people rather than just to flock to the easy places come out and see me, visit me and come for a fish with me in some of the more out of the way spots there are some absolutely magnificent spots around the country that are still relatively undiscovered I mean, a lot of people might go to um, walk their King Charles Spaniel and have a latte and talk to the surfer dudes at the old shark bait down at Raglan, but um, if you want, just a little secret, sneak down the road slightly south of there to a place called Kafia, and um, I'll tell you what, it's one of the most magic spots. Um, you can still catch snapper off the beach there you know it's one of those sort of spots uh it's kind of one of those little towns that's been perhaps a little forgotten tons of campgrounds and in the new years they they have something really special that you want to look into there's um 
and some boat races on New Year's Day. It's pretty amazing stuff. And there's loads of places like that all around the country, around um, the smaller lakes from um, up around Rotorua, you know, Rotomar and, and, and all of those um, small lakes up there. They're gorgeous and you can go through to um, Kaurau, probably the hottest place in New Zealand. And... You know, places like that, stop for a pie, stop for a coffee, chat to the locals, even have a uh, lemonade down at the pub. Um, Those are the sort of places that really need everybody's support to get through this. And remember, this this COVID thing is not going to be here forever, but it's most, most important that as many people as possible get vaccinated. There's no guarantee that it's going to stop the Delta variant, but doing nothing will guarantee us failure. So, you know, everyone must rally together and make the effort to get the shots. I've booked in now, and I'm getting in as soon as I can. Um, I'm not a great fan of vaccinations, but I know this is a necessary evil, so we must do this to ensure that as many of our vulnerable people are protected as possible, and it's not so much about protecting your own life but it's protecting those vulnerable people the old folks and stuff like that we don't want to be going into old folks homes infected with such a nasty thing that's going to knock over those folks who are not as physically strong as they once were and you know it's all about protecting our most vulnerable in society we're not just doing this for ourselves we're doing it for each other and let's hope that something as terrible as a pandemic can pull us a bit closer and make us reflect upon how we've kind of become more and more disengaged over the years and less caring and more more selfish. Perhaps this is an opportunity for us to realise how important each other are, how important all of us are together as as a community and this I'm all right Jack I've got plenty of money and why should I care about anyone else this kind of greedy selfish attitude of the 80s and 90s and even 2000s I'm hoping in the 2020s that we dispel these kind of ridiculous selfish notions of grabbing what you can for yourself and actually realizing that life is better when we share what we have to those who have less, to see the look on their faces, to know how much they appreciate that help and that care. That's why I work for Arrow Radio. I don't get paid for what I do. In fact, it costs me. And there's nobody here that really benefits in any financial way. They do it for the communities, especially Michael and Veronica here, who work very selflessly behind the scenes. And they do a power of work to make things happen and there are so many hurdles in their way I honestly don't know how they keep going but they do I guess they just really believe that they're making a difference and they certainly are but I'd also like to thank all the sponsors and Wairapa TV for coming on now you can get um, these shows on channel 41 on free view now apparently if you don't have a UHF aerial Um, Channel 41 is not necessarily available on your TV but you can get the app on your phone and you can watch Freeview Freeview Channel 41 at your leisure um, on your phone so don't forget that 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 little tool of yours is far more powerful than than you realise so rather than just watching some monkey do something stupid um, you know, use it to, to do something a little bit better than that and tune into these shows. They're also available on Arrow Radio's website. There are podcasts of all of these shows, so you can tune on into that whenever you like on, on whatever device you might have. Um, it's always nice to think that people tune in it's always nice to get feedback, you know, if someone says to me, I heard you on the radio. It just goes to show that even with all this modern technology, radio is one of those things that I hope will never die because listening to something live, listening to it fresh, it's not pre-recorded, there is a type of engagement in that where you feel 
like you are, and you are my audience, my people, who care enough to listen. And it, it's heartwarming to know that all of our efforts are not in vain when someone says, oh, I heard you on the radio show, it was good, you know, and sometimes people seem surprised. I don't know why. You know, I've been writing now for 40, 45 years now. I've been writing and doing all these types of things. I've never really sought the limelight. I don't want fame or money. I, I write mostly for myself. I do it for others as well, for entertainment, but mostly to be provocative, to to be thought-provoking, to be the one that makes people reconsider their preconceptions because we're not always 100% right about everything and our attitudes and opinions change over time due to whatever influences might make us think twice and that's what I at least hope this radio show does. Let's me for another week. Time passes so very quickly. I wish we had more time together and I certainly would like to do a lot more for you if I could read some more stories and stuff. Who knows how this might develop one day. But in the meantime, I just want to say thank you very much for tuning in. Remember, be there for each other. This is most important that we get through this as a country and we need to rally together, urban and rural both, working together and realising that, you know, this place can be paradise, it is paradise. We need to look after it, the country, but also each other. So I hope you bear that in mind this week. Thank you very much for tuning in, and uh, I will see you again next Friday. Ciao for now.